I realise I've been wearing my hat backwards a lot lately. I just want to put you all at ease and confirm that I am not turning into a douche nozzle. It's because we are currently in quarantine and we're not allowed to go outside. And despite having a fucked hairline, the parts of my head that do have hair uh, grow like fuck. And I can't go out to get it cut. So it just sits down in front of my face. A little like a fucking slav. We've all played Grand Theft Auto. And one thing that we've all done while playing Grand Theft Auto is going on a rampage. Shooting everyone, blowing everything up, trying to get that five or six star wanted level. Just having a great old time. But the best way, the best way to go on a rampage in Grand Theft Auto is with the tank. The tank is the best thing to go on a rampage with in Grand Theft Auto. Just because it's so much damn fun because it's a fucking tank. Well, someone actually did that. Sean Nelson. But before we get into the mad lad, today's video is sponsored by Raycon, the hottest and the best wireless earbuds on the market, starting at half of the price of the next premium band, despite the sound quality being just as good. I use my Raycons to listen to music and podcasts while I am working out or while I am out walking the dog at least 30 feet away from other people. The Everyday E25 model, as shown here, are their best ones yet, with 6 hours of battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact, very well fitting design. My ears are stupid and most standard headphones fall out, but not these bad boys. So if you would like 15% off of your order, then you can click my link down below, buyraycon.com slash dankula. That is it, buyraycon.com Slash Dankula Habibi, please, click the link. Sean Nelson was born on the 21st of August 1959 in Utah, in the town of Birdseye. Yep, Tom, turns out that actually is a real place, it's, uh, it's where fish fingers were invented. He was one of three brothers and he grew up in San Diego, California. After graduating high school, he enlisted in the military where he served for two years until his honourable discharge in 1980. After his discharge, he returned to San Diego and started a plumbing business, and it was during this time that he met his wife and got married. Life seemed to be going very well for him. He had an awful lot of money, because he was a plumber, and plumbers are fucking rip-offs. He was married, he had a nice big house, his plumbing business was doing really well. Things were going absolutely fantastic. But then, in just a sheer stroke of absolute bad luck, the man just suffered a bunch of terrible events, just one after the other. In 1988, his dad died. Then in 1990, his wife filed for divorce. Then in 1992, his mother died. And then that same year, he was hospitalised with severe neck and back injuries from a motorcycle accident. After getting out of hospital, Nelson was unable to work due to the neck and back injuries he sustained from the accident, so his business was in big trouble. But just to just to really make sure, just to really make sure his business went under, someone broke into his truck and stole all of his tools. So his business completely fell apart, and with no income to pay any of his bills, his utilities were cut off, and the bank started to foreclose on his house. I have no idea why, but fate just seemed determined to shit on this guy. So his parents were dead, his wife was divorcing him, he was in near almost constant pain from the accident that he'd been in, his utilities were cut off, the bank was taking his house away, and he couldn't make any money to try and keep his house or get his utilities back on because his business completely fell apart because someone stole all of his tools, which were worth thousands. Now, all of that happening to you in just the space of four years, that is enough to make any man crack. And it was around about this time that the erratic, 
behaviour started. Nelson filed a lawsuit against Sharp Memorial Hospital. This was the hospital that treated him after his motorcycle accident. And in the lawsuit, he said he was suing them for negligence, assault, battery, and false imprisonment. Basically, uh, Nelson was accusing the hospital of saving his life without his consent. And it seemed that Nelson also had a little bit of a vendetta against this hospital because this was the same hospital that treated his mother when she was passing away. And Nelson seemed to actually blame this hospital for his mother's death. A judge dismissed Nelson's case, but the hospital countersued Nelson for unpaid medical bills of $6,600. And the hospital won their case against Nelson. So Nelson received a court order to pay $6,600 to the hospital. $6,600 that Nelson had absolutely no way of paying. So Nelson had hit rock bottom. Absolute rock bottom. But Nelson managed to find comfort in something. Something that, you know, helped ease his pains and his burdens. But it's a something that you kind of don't want to go anywhere near when you've hit rock bottom. Meth. Nelson was smoking meth. Nelson was smoking a lot of meth, which uh, obviously increased his uh, already erratic behaviour. His neighbours were on the phone constantly to the cops because they were being kept awake at night by Nelson screaming at his roommate and his new live-in girlfriend. In interviews with police, Nelson's friends described his uh, erratic behaviour, saying that he would constantly fly into violent rages, he would constantly threaten to kill himself, and that he described the Oklahoma bombing as good stuff. It was during this time that Nelson made a great discovery. Some, something that would solve all of his problems. Gold. He found gold. He found gold in his own back garden, no less. What are the chances? He found gold, boys. In his own back garden. So what Nelson did was he immediately went out into his back garden and in a, in a meth fueled frenzy dug a 15 foot deep mine shaft down into his back garden so that he could mine all of the gold and dig it up and sell it. And it would solve all of his problems. Gold boys. He found gold. His problems were now solved. But there was just one little problem. There was no gold. He went out and dug that gigantic mine shaft for absolutely nothing. There was no gold because he dreamed the entire thing up. Because he was on meth. Shortly after this, Nelson's girlfriend and his roommate moved out. Leaving Nelson all alone in that great big house that the bank was coming to take away. The only thing that Nelson had left was a great big hole in his back garden and a great big pile of meth. On the 17th of May, 1995, Nelson decided that he had had enough. So he smoked all of his meth, all of it, and got into his car and started driving. And he found himself arriving at the California National Guard Armory. Sean Nelson had decided that he was going to steal a tank. Why? Meth. That's why. Fortunately for Nelson, the gate to the armory was lying wide open and the, there were no guards. Yeah, you know, the armory where they keep the tanks and the guns and the explosives and all those other dangerous things. Yeah, the, the gate was wide open and there was no guards. So Sean just, he just walked straight in. Nelson then starts walking around all of the tanks looking for one to steal. Now these particular tanks that Nelson was looking at had a, had a little bit of a security flaw, you know, just, just a minor one. You see, these particular types of tanks, uh, you don't need a key to start them. I mean, you don't even need to hotwire them. You just, you just push a button. You, you just push a button and they start. You know, little, little bit of a security oversight you know, but, but maybe I'm just being pedantic. The first two tanks that Nelson got into, however, wouldn't start. So Nelson climbed up on top of a third tank 
a 57 ton M60 A3 Patton main battle tank. And it was when he was on top of this tank that a guard at the armory finally spotted him and rushed towards him. Nelson jumped right into the tank and pushed the button. The tank started and Nelson started driving. The guard that was running towards him kind of wisely said, fuck that, and ran away to one of the offices and called the police. I mean, if he was a real man, he would have hopped in his own tank and had a fucking showdown, but no, he ran away and called the police like a little pussy. So Nelson charged the tank out of the armory and into the streets of San Diego. Now, fortunately for the city of San Diego, the munitions for this tank were kept in a separate warehouse. None of them were in the tank. There were no bullets, no shells, no nothing. The tank had absolutely no ammo, so Nelson couldn't fire any of the guns. So how much damage can you really do in a tank that has absolutely no ammo? Turns out quite a lot. Cue the music. And so began a police chase that reached a top speed of a staggering 30 miles per hour. But despite the slow speed, the police couldn't do anything. Because it's a fucking tank. In fact, it's not just any tank. It's a tank being driven by a man who is 90% meth. The police did everything that they could, but all they could do was watch helplessly as Nelson, in his meth-fueled rage with his tank, wrought absolute destruction throughout the city of San Diego. I mean, even at one point, he tried repeatedly ramming into the support columns of a pedestrian footbridge, trying to bring the thing down. Some people have theorised, given the path that the tank took, that Sean was heading towards Sharp Memorial Hospital so that he could enact revenge against them for his failed lawsuit and the death of his mother. The police still only had police cars, and small arms. There was absolutely nothing that they could do against a tank. It was clear that the only thing that could stop Sean now was Team Anglerfish from Girls und Panzer. But sadly, Miho Nishizumi was unavailable because she was far away living on a town that was built on top of an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean. Honestly, it's such a fucking good anime. But at the end of the day, she was not needed because the thing that finally brought an end to Sean Nelson's tank rampage was a four foot high concrete barrier. The tank was stuck. And while Sean was frantically trying to break the tank free, the tank lost one of its tracks. This is when the police saw their opportunity to swarm the tank and they started wrestling with the hatch, trying to get it open. And when they got it open, they seen Sean inside, still trying to get the tank free. They yelled at Sean, telling him to surrender. Sean ignored their orders and kept trying to get the tank free. So a police officer fired a single shot, which hit Sean in the neck. They dragged Nelson out of the tank and rushed him off to hospital, where he later died. Nelson ultimately caused millions of dollars worth of damage, and the armory that he stole the tank from, oh boy, oh boy, did they get into fucking trouble for their very, very many security failures. You know, just, just little minor ones, you know. Just little minor ones that allowed a fucking meth entity to just 
walk through the fucking front gate unchallenged and steal a fucking tank. Now I know what you're all thinking. I know what you're all saying. You're probably spamming it in the Premier chat right now. This situation bears a striking resemblance to another mad lad that we've done. Killdozer, Marvin Heemeyer. Now with Marvin Heemeyer's situation, there was a moral lesson. There was a philosophical learning from his situation. You know, we, we walked away with it learning a little something about human nature and about society. So is there a lesson here? I mean, some people have said that Sean Nelson's tank rampage was a symbol of the demise of America's middle class. And that possibly could be it. But in an interview, 20 years after the incident, his ex-wife did an interview and she managed to clear up for everyone the true reason, the true meaning behind Sean Nelson's tank rampage. Myth. That's it. That's all there is. This isn't another Marvin Heemeyer. It's not another Killdozer. There is no philosophical learning. There is no moral lesson. Just myth. There is new merch. There is new merch on Sharpless Cash. If you wanted to buy something trendy for the ladies. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe. <laughs> yeah.